Well, hello, Bulverde Baptist Church. I'm here with Phil Flournoy, our associate pastor. Um, Phil, tell us a little bit about yourself um, from how, how long have you been on staff, um, your, your wife, your kids, grandkids, you know, give us the, kind of the 411 on Phil Flournoy. Okay, well, we came to the church uh, May of 88 as a youth and music minister. And uh, my job's changed a little bit over the 32 years, uh, evolved a little bit. I think Paul is the fifth pastor that I've worked with, uh, not counting interims and in between all that, but uh, I guess I'm kind of tough on pastors. Uh, I have three kids. Uh, the oldest, uh, Jason, uh, is a fireman paramedic in uh, New Braunfels, and uh, he has four kids. Uh, Toby, our middle child, is uh, in charge of the acute adolescent division uh, at a unit for Laurel Ridge Counseling uh, Treatment Center. And uh, he has two boys. And then uh, our daughter, Shandy, is married to a San Antonio uh, policeman. And uh, they just, their little girl just celebrated her first year uh, birthday uh, last Sunday. And uh, so that gives us seven grandkids. Wow. Now, um, some know who've been here for a while know that you were uh, raised as an MK, which is known as a, a missionary's kid. Uh, how long were you uh, there in Brazil? Were you were you born there, or did you go there later on? And how many years uh, were you uh, there, being raised in in Brazil, growing up? Well, I was seven years old when we uh, boarded a ship and uh, and moved to Brazil. Back then, it was it was uh, cheaper to go by boat than it was by plane, and so the foreign mission board uh, sent us on a on a slow boat to Brazil. How long does that take to go from the states of Brazil in a boat? Well, back then, uh, the ship stopped at various ports, and uh, so it took us, I think, 14, 15 days. Wow. Um, we thought it was a lot of fun, though, because it, was, it wasn't like the fancy cruise ships that you have today, but it did have a swimming pool on it and, and uh, some other things for us to do as kids. But anyway, I was seven when we moved to Brazil. I uh, went through the whole Brazilian school system there. Uh, came back two weeks before college started. And then uh, two of the summers while I was in college, I went back for the summer there. Uh, spent six months in between college and seminary uh, volunteering down there, starting a prefab portable chapel project that my dad uh, was just starting. And uh, then during seminary, I was back for one summer. And then after I got married and uh, finished seminary, uh, Karen and I served in Brazil for three and a half years with the International Mission Board. Wow. So Brazil, most of your entire childhood going back in college and then going back once you and Karen were married, but being on staff here for 32 years, you've seen God do some, some great things. And you've also probably been through some, some, some trying times like we are kind of going through right now. Um, the email I sent to us as a staff talking about um, best practices, uh, how to keep our heads and our heart healthy and difficult times. We talked about podcasts and um, obviously the word of God and prayer and friendships, our families. Um, what are some of the things that you do um, in difficult seasons of your life to kind of keep things, um, you know, going down the road? We can't change everything around us, but we can kind of be in control of our own self. And so how do you keep your head and your heart healthy in times like this? Well, uh, having majored in physical education, uh, staying healthy physically has always been a big part of uh, what I try to do, uh, exercising and uh, eating healthy and, and all of that is a big part of what I think helps me uh, stay active. Um, I do listen to some podcasts that I find uh, just challenging or, or interesting or informative. Uh, this last week weekend while I was working outside, I uh, listened to something by Andy Stanley. Uh, what to do in times uh, when things are unpredictable and, and uh, when you can't prepare for it. Uh, also, Greg Rochelle is one that I think you're familiar with that I, I enjoy listening to. And then I listened to one that I just saw the title of it and I thought this ought to be uh, worthwhile. So it's titled Things You Should Know. And some of it was useful, practical, some of it was just fascinating. Uh, then I have a, so on the spiritual side, uh, I have a devotional. It's kind of short and to the point, but uh, pretty meaty uh, that comes in every day from Paul Powell. He was a pastor at Green Acres Baptist Church in uh, Tyler, where Lachelle's parents, I think, have uh, attended in the past. But uh, he's not even alive anymore, but they have his library, and they send these out each, each day, and I find those very helpful, very useful. That's awesome. Um, 
Over the course of your time here at Bull Verde, you've been able to see um, God do some really great things. Um, what are some of the highlights um, that just kind of, um, for lack of better words, just kind of, you know, kind of pick you up, just a reminder of God's faithfulness or his, his grace and his love for us? What are some of those highlights that you've seen God just do some really great things that you kind of look back on? Well, in youth ministry, uh, for almost 15 years here, I had quite a few uh, young people that came through, and uh, now, uh, just noticed yesterday, one of them celebrating her 40th birthday. So now that they're older and they have kids and families and careers of their own, uh, you realize that maybe you did something helpful or useful uh, during those years in youth ministry. At the time, you kind of wonder whether they're going to end up delinquents or what they're going to do. But uh, now they're scattered all over the world, and uh, some of them in ministry, and and uh, so it, it's rewarding to look back and, and say, okay, 15, 20, 30 years later, uh, what I said or did maybe had an impact or an influence in somebody's life. Uh, another thing that that's happened here at the church that I would have never predicted at the time that I started it was upward basketball, and that has reached. Uh, I don't know, no telling how many hundreds, if not thousands of yeah. people in our community. And again, some of those people uh, who played when they were in third, fourth, fifth grade are now uh, married and, and um, have all kinds of different jobs scattered all over the world. And so you just never know what kind of an influence or impact you might have on somebody even at a young age like that. Now you mentioned scattered around the world. Um, it gets my mind thinking about uh, missions and you have been uh, being raised in a, a, as a missionary's kid, um, you've planned nearly all of our mission trips or helped be a part of um, most of all of our foreign mission trips here at our church. Um, for someone who has a heart for missions and they kind of define that as going overseas, that this uh, pandemic that we're kind of experiencing is really limited travel uh, to be able to do that. Matter of fact, we had a couple trips planned ourselves as a church. We had to back out of those for uh, for travel reasons and safety reasons, but what, what are some advice you'd give someone who would say, I have a heart for missions, but I can't go and be a missionary. I can't go to Ecuador in the summer. Um, what, what's a challenge or an encouragement you could give someone like that? Well, uh, going back to again to when I was youth minister, we did mission trips every year, but uh, they were always within the United States. And it was anything from helping with a vacation Bible school, a backyard Bible club, uh, to helping with clothes closets, to helping a smaller struggling church do some uh, sprucing up around their church, uh, a variety of different things like that. I think now with the, with the virus situation and we're supposed to stay home and social distancing and all of that, it presents a whole new challenge in, in all for us and uh, limits uh, to a degree what we would like to do or, or are able to do. But it may be that here in our own community, in our own area, that there's more social type things that we can do, such as I noticed yesterday at the food bank, they have about 400 volunteers in San Antonio Food Bank, but only about 100 of them are actually showing up because they're either scared of getting sick or they are sick or in quarantine or whatever, and so they're real short-handed uh, for something like that. Um, but I know that, you know, just like you mentioned in your sermon Sunday, even if we're doing something that may not look like it's a mission project, there's still opportunities to share the gospel uh, mm -hmm. with those that we come into contact with. And um, there's plenty of people uh, right now that have, have needs, either uh, helping them get to a doctor or uh, shopping or something around their home. And uh, even in situations like that, it opens the door for, for missions or for ministry. And, and I think sometimes, you know, uh, is we talked about, you know, we can't really go into Ecuador or Brazil this summer like we had planned. Um, and we may not even be able to travel abroad here in the, in the United States. As you mentioned, looking in our really realistically our own community, our own backyard, I would, I would bring the fence in a little even smaller and say some of us, we don't have to look at past our own kitchen table. Um, we could be mission minded right there at our own kitchen table with talking with our kids, um, working through some of their, uh, their struggles, uh, life, and answering their questions, doing devotions, or praying with their own kids. And so to really be mission-minded is, is not just something that you have to do when you go off. It's just it's something really we should challenge ourselves to do as we wake up. And, uh, well, Phil, we're getting close to our, our, our time here, and I would really appreciate it if um, as we kind of wind this time down as, you know, reminding ourselves what it looks like to be mission-minded 
uh, different podcasts we'd listen to, um, you know, the way we, we lead and love our families well. That's one thing I, I love about you is uh, I see how you um, love Karen and talk about your kids and the way you still will go and, and serve them and the way you show up at your, your son's and your daughter house and, and help them with projects. You know, you, you have always said whatever it takes and uh, you're still leading uh, that legacy for you as a father to your kids, even though you are in that grandfather role, um, you still, um, I see you parenting uh, your, your kids uh, well, even though they're adults and probably don't need parenting, uh, you're still there loving and caring for them just as you had done for years, just in a different way. Um, and I, that's an encouragement to me, um, being much younger to, to, to see that and to want to model that. I'd really appreciate it as we wind our time down today, if you would just pray for our church, um, our community, our leaders, I mean, just kind of whatever else is, is on your heart, um, I'd appreciate that. Well, Father, we're thankful for every day of life that you give us, and uh, in times like this, we realize even more sometimes how precious life is. Uh, we pray for our families as we're not able to, uh, to go and do as we uh, are used to, that you would keep us uh, safe and healthy and uh, keep us well as a family unit. Uh, we pray for our church family and uh, the challenges that this is uh, presented for us as we're not able to, to be together and to meet and do as we uh, are uh, used to and as we like to and uh, makes it difficult for us to uh, stay in touch and to know uh, what's going on in, in each person's life but we just pray for the health of our church and thank you for uh, those that are leading um, small groups and uh, doing things uh, through uh, a variety of different media that uh, we're having to get used to and learn about. We pray for our country. We know that uh, President Trump and those that are advising him that this is a whole new uh, area to navigate as well and that uh, things that were predictable uh, in the past aren't always uh, predictable now and that they're finding out new things um, each day or week and, uh, and what worked uh, two or three weeks ago may not be uh, working right now so it's a difficult time. And we just pray for wisdom and discernment. Pray for uh, them to turn to you for, for godly uh, instruction and uh, decisions that they make. Just thank you for uh, remembering that through all of this, when we come out of it, we come out of it uh, stronger. And uh, it's an opportunity for us to uh, just deepen our faith in you and, and knowing that you love us and care for us and protect us and provide for us in, in many, many different ways. We're thankful for that. For it's in your name we pray. Amen. Amen.